it's it's like a miracle substance it's really really valuable like i made a video a long time ago saying it was like a swiss army knife and that's how i think of it like so like if i had a bad bad night like we talked about a little bit earlier like i wouldn't change my thyroid dose or start renovating my nutrition i would like take more aspirin that day if mm -hmm. i if I had to do a bunch of stuff you know because um if you're anything like me you overload yourself with work so that if you have a bad day it's going to be like extra bad because you have to do so much stuff and, and so like these days i can't really afford that so it's nice to have tools in the toolbox for things that you can't control like i can't control how many times my dogs bark at nighttime so it's like uh it, it can really change the tone of a day I'm Kitty Bloomfield, co-founder of New Strength and Saturated, creator of Pro Metabolic Food Supplements and Seriously Saturated Skincare. And today we have our good friend Danny Roddy back on the podcast. Danny, welcome back. Thanks for coming on again. Yo, yo, what's up? Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. <laughs> Beard's looking solid as usual. Mm. That's uh, it's my, my give up on life beard, the, the new trajectory of my life being alone in the desert. <laughs> uh, but why? Why trim it? You can just live like that. It's so good. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> So today we uh, want, oh, well, I wanted to, not we, want to get Danny on just to do a, a episode dedicated to aspirin, the amazing aspirin, which we've been taking for years and years. And I get lots of questions about it. I think I've got poor for in my teeth. Sorry. I was just eating my lunch while we're having a chat. Um, <laughs> got to feel the beast, you know, I'm legs yeah. day, legs day <laughs> after this, got to have enough fuel. So yeah, I just wanted to get Danny on just to do a quick, short and sweet podcast about aspirin. So I've got a list of questions here to ask you. So first of all, I, yeah. I, I could tell a little story of how I got into it. Yes, please go ahead, tell us. Yeah. Yeah. So, so for, for what it's worth, uh, I, I thought I was pretty instantaneously interested in Ray's ideas of about, about a lot of thing, Ray Pete and uh, thyroid was instantaneously kind of really attractive to me and his dietary ideas made sense to me, given my background of like paleo and being interested in fruitarianism and things like that. Um, but when he would talk about aspirin, I would tune it out completely. I, I was like, man, he right be, he probably is right about thyroid. He's probably right about sugar, but I, I don't think he's right about aspirin. And so why did you was, think that? Do you I think don't know. I, I had a personal prejudice against it for whatever <laughs> reason. Like I, like the paleo people I had been talking to for years said it was like an NSAID and it would ruin the gut and stuff like that. So I think that those ideas were embedded in my brain. And it wasn't until like there used to be a small group of people on Facebook, like a closed group of like 30 people that were all like super high quality, all learning about Ray at the same exact time. And there was like an aspirin thread in, in that group. And then somebody came in and we, we were all pretty um, skeptical uh, about it. And, and the, the dude, his name was Jameson. He came in and he's like, dude, you guys are all idiots. <laughs> like aspirin like saved my life. Uh, I, I found out about it in like the early 2000s or something, whenever Ray wrote that brain cancer or, uh, aspirin article. And it, and so he was like, you guys are wrong about this, 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 and providing papers and stuff like that. And I was like, man, this guy really knows his stuff. Anyways, I linked up with him via messages and just asked him dozens of questions about it. And something that was really appealing to me was when I first started taking thyroid, it didn't warm me up like it was supposed to. And I was like, I don't know what's going on. Like, how, how am I using this wrong? And anyways, when I would talk to him, he'd be like, well, that's one of like the main things that aspirin can do is it can warm a person up. And I was like, okay, so maybe it's not thyroid per se. Maybe I could try aspirin. Anyways, uh, that, that was my intro into it. And when I would take it, I would, uh, it, it was hard for me to tell back then, but I think over time I figured out that it made me feel good or it could change the tone of a day. So if I had a bad morning or a bad night, I could take it in the morning and it would make me feel better and um definitely increased endurance like um stamina and things like that but but i'm just t the uh, at the uh, tip of the iceberg but um that was how i got into it so i wasn't like ray pete said it and i was sold i was actually highly skeptical anti it and then this guy changed my mind because he had been using it uh i neglected to say that he had like hiv so he was taking like seven grams of it per day so it just taking, wow yeah monstrous amount of and it. what happened with him and it's kind of a really sad, sad story, so we can skip oh. that. <laughs> okay, so you didn't hear him. <laughs> but he, he was uh, he was instrumental in, in mm. me figuring out that aspirin was valuable. I don't think I would have tried it if it wasn't for him. I mean, maybe eventually, but he was a really compelling guy. I've like heard things, or maybe it was Emma who's told me, or she's had some communication with Ray when he was alive about treating cancer patients with aspirin. 
Yeah, so that's that's not even a Ray Pete thing. Like, I mean, there are mainstream articles about that. One's from ProPublica. It's called Where Are the Low-Cost Aspirin um, Cancer Treatments? And it mm. talks about using aspirin. Like um, cancer cells, there's a lot going on. But what I understand is there's like a defect between gly glycolysis and mitochondrial respiration. So that's like the old way of making energy versus the new way. Mm. And that, that – um, Respiratory defect of the pyruvate dehydrogenase uh, can be activated by estrogen or PUFA, and mm. aspirin is one of the things that can help reactivate it and basically shift a cancer cell back to a healthy normal cell. And so it can like progesterone and thyroid. It's called the Warburg effect. And wow. um, so, anyways, that's not that controversial. But uh, in Ray's aspirin brain and cancer article, he says when people want my advice for what to do about a cancer. He, he said something like, I often told, told them to take 20 tablets, and they thought I was really? joking, so, so they didn't do it. Yeah, so. Yeah, how many milligrams of aspirin a day would that be? Uh, 20, 20 times uh, 325. It'd be like about 7 grams, 6.5 grams. Wow. wow. So, but there's a paper by a guy named Gomez who says basically the exact same thing. Like th this, I, I know it sounds real odd, maybe for the first time hearing it. It's like, how could aspirin possibly be studied for cancer? But it is. And there are papers on it. And high dose aspirin. Maybe you can send me the links. I'll put them in the show notes. Yeah, yeah that'd yeah. be awesome. Okay, cool. All right. Well, what is aspirin, Danny? <laughs> what is it? Uh, well, I think the salicylic acid uh, is a, a metabolite from salis, uh, salicin which is like a natural compound in willow bark. But aspirin is acetyl salicylic acid, which is salicylic acid with an acetyl gr group added onto it. So mm -hmm. that's that's about as much as I know uh, about that. <laughs> okay, cool. Oh, no, that's perfect. Yeah. That's what, so what it is and where it comes from. And um, lately there's been a lot of publicity saying it can damage the stomach and intestines. Is this true? Yeah, I think that is true, that it will irritate the gut for a few days, but there are papers, and I could forward these too, but they, they say the intestine adapts over a period of time, and, and they're actually using like monstrous doses, like three grams, uh, mm -hmm. and, and they show after, I, I can't remember, maybe a week or two, the intestine adapts and stops bleeding, but mm -hmm. that is a possibility, and um, but as, as I'm sure we'll get into, there are lots of toxic additives in most aspirin products, like silica or titanium dioxide or mm -hmm. yellow number 40 or something and, and so it, it, when a person has a bad response to aspirin you really don't know if it's just that, that ad adaptive phase of taking the aspirin or if you've uh, taking something that's really irritating and it's upsetting the gut um yeah i actually just you just triggered my memory i think kate Deering, everyone will know kate did a pod i'm just not a podcast did a post a while back uh here we go aspirin uh, and she said, she said, I'm just going to read this post of hers and people can go and I'll put it in the show notes. Aspirin ra rapidly breaks down into ac acetic acid and salicylic acid, which is found in many fruits and is protective to the stomach and intestine and other organs. When aspirin was compared with other common anti-inflammatory drugs, drugs, it was found that salicylic acid, it, it, so it releases protects against the damage done by another drug. Repeated use of aspirin protects the stomach against very strong irritants. The experiments in which the aspirin produces stomach ulcers are designed to produce ulcers, not to realistically model the way aspirin is used. The slight irritation produced by a normal dose of aspirin can be minimized by dissolving the aspirin in water. The stomach develops a tolerance for aspirin over a period of few days, allowing the dose to be increased if necessary. Dr. Ray Pete, so yeah. Just what you said, basically. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's from yeah. that's from Ray's art. That and that, for what it's worth, mimics my experience like perfectly. Mm. Like th this is why I I did a little podcast called Bioenergetic Basics uh, mm. on aspirin, and um, for what it's worth, I always dissolve aspirin in hot water, uh, and and then I add a little baking soda to it, mm. and then I separate it from the junk at the bottom, and I put it in juice or something. And so mm. again, I have a pretty sensitive stomach, and so the fact that I can do this, I think really probably anybody can because mm. if something's going to set off my intestine, it would. So it, mm. it, it, there are safe ways of using aspirin and there are unsafe ways of using aspirin. Which and we'll get to, which I've got the question on that too. So we'll get that to that. Um, so, okay, let's talk about the benefits, all the different th amazing things that aspirin can do and why it's so good. It, the easiest way to probably think about it is, is it, it's an anti-estrogen. And so in stress, aromatase, the enzyme, converts testosterone into estrogen. And, and so just inhibiting that uh, would r really have a ripple effect on a person's health. Mm. Um, there are a lot of other things, like one of the bad parts about PUFA is um, 
uh, a so-called essential fat, arachidonic acid, is can be converted into things called prostaglandins. So these are like hormones from the PUFA. And these things are, this is another kind of contrarian thing about Ray, is a lot of people think there are good prostaglandins and bad prostaglandins. And Ray was like, no, these all exhibit harm to some level. They're all bad. And mm -hmm. so aspirin, this is a very basic feature of aspirin, but it inhibits the formation of prostaglandins. And so from like allergies to even hair loss to like everything, um, mm -hmm. these prostaglandins are involved. And so just keeping them real low by keeping the PUFA intake low is probably smart, but using mm -hmm. something like aspirin, if a person's been eating a Western diet for a long time, is probably pretty smart too. Just looking back again at Kate's post, she talked about um, why aspirin is so amazing, Pr protects against lipid peroxidation, improves mitochondrial respiration, improves glucose metabolism, inhibits normal abnormal cell division, promotes normal cell growth, reduces blood clotting, decreases the production of estrogen, stimulates bone formation, increases insulin sensitivity and protective against sunburn. That's actually one thing that I've noticed too, is that like, cause Craig and I live, we live in the beach. Yeah. We get a lot of sun and I never burn now. Yeah. Ever. Yeah. Yeah. That's, um, it's, it's like a miracle substance. It's really, really valuable. Like I made a video a long time ago saying it was like a Swiss army knife and that's how I think of it. Like, so so like if I had a bad, bad night, like we talked about a little bit earlier, like I wouldn't change my thyroid dose or start renovating my nutrition. I would like take more aspirin that day if, mm -hmm. I, if I had to do a bunch of stuff, you know, because um, if you're anything like me, you overload yourself with work so that if you have a bad day, it's going to be like extra bad because you have to do so much stuff. And, and so like these days, I can't really afford that. So it's nice to have tools in the toolbox for things that you can't control. Like I can't control mm -hmm. how many times my dogs bark at nighttime. So it's like uh it, it can really change the tone of a day and um like like uh, i think on an old conversation with ray we were talking about the different layers of the stress system and so you have like these more primitive layers uh, and on top of that you have the newer layers of uh, adaptation and i think the interesting thing about aspirin is it appro approaches so many different layers from like what's happening with pufa what's happening with increasing in estrogen what's happening with like, a deficiency of androgens or the in inability to form a uh, for, uh, the formation of progesterone, et cetera, et cetera. And aspirin does so many different things at so many different points that it's like an anti-stress drug is really valuable. And it's so cheap and so easy. Yeah, that's the other thing. Like pe pennies. And uh, yeah. Um, it's, uh, yeah, again, I would not, if the, I, I, 10 years of using it has really opened me up to how valuable mm -hmm. it is. It's just gotten me out of so many different jams. And like, like, uh, there was one specific time in, I, I didn't think of it as a sleep aid for a long time, but there was one significant stress I uh, uh, endured that caused me to like have basically no sleep for like two weeks. And the mm -hmm. first night I was in the kitchen and I was like, I don't know what I'm going to do. This is like crazy. There's going to be two weeks of the same thing and I won't be able to uh, get out of it. And basically I cooked up some like uh, Mexican Coke, a little bit of coffee. And I was like <laughs> very desperate and uh, some aspirin and I drank it and I was went to sleep in probably about 20 minutes mm. and uh so all those things can help increase the energy metabolism and relax a person and that was the first time when i used aspirin it was like very clear that it helped me get to sleep and so it had utility and then i just started using it very regularly after that should we just put in a little note in here that like because just because of what we were talking about prior to the podcast it's like this isn't a magic pill like if you're eating 800 calories a day and oh, yeah. like if you're not doing all the basic stuff right I don't think aspirin is going to fix all of your problems, you know, make sure you like all the things that we talk, get adequate protein, eating adequate calories, you know, getting sunshine, all the things that we talk about. It was just interesting. Danny and I were talking about someone that he worked with that, you know, three, three calls in, she tells him she's eating a thousand calories and he's like, okay, yeah. probably a bit more than that. <laughs> so just that note in there, everyone, it's not the magic drug. If you're not doing everything, you know, doing all the basic stuff, right. Okay. Um, why is it important to take vitamin K when you're using aspirin K2? Yeah, I have a real limited understanding of this, but I think it does thin the blood by depleting protein S and C that are mm -hmm. in the liver that are like essential for clotting. And those are vitamin K dependent proteins. And so if you supplement vitamin K that um, so this uh, counteracts from the... excessive. Yeah. yeah. And the one thing I'll th throw out there, I've, I think I've told this story a thousand times, but in Thailand, I was taking like maybe two grams of aspirin and um, I cut my toe on a board and I think I was taking like five milligrams of vitamin K. I bled like crazy. So I, I was not taking enough vitamin K for that amount of aspirin. 
Yep. And uh, so, so it, I, I would have said that's more than enough, but it definitely wasn't for me. So that I, I had to be more careful about that because, um, the, I mean, it was when I cut my toe, it was like a faucet. It was re really yeah. bad. So that was actually my next question. So how much K would you like, say for every 300 milligrams of aspirin, how much vitamin K would you take? I don't know if anybody knows, like, I, yeah. I, because vitamin K can just be deficient in general. Like I, mm -hmm. I asked Ray a while ago, and I think this is reflected yeah. in the literature of how, how prevalent vitamin K deficiency is. And it's like very prevalent. Mm -hmm. and there's just no test like vitamin D. You have the benefit of being able to go get that solid test and see, mm -hmm. but vitamin K, there's no such test. And mm -hmm. so you have to do more guess or, or measure protein S and protein C. Go ahead. Yeah, or test it, or take aspirin, take the vitamin K, and then cut yourself. And yeah, that you you can <laughs> roughly, roughly, like, would you take? I don't know, roughly to, as a minimum, do you think? And then obviously you'd need to test it, but the, like, how much about that? Yeah, yeah. Go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. No, so how much vitamin K do you take and aspirin? To, yeah, I can get like so. I have Georgie's product, which I'm not affiliated with. Like, uh, I, I can get like about thirty drops on my leg. And so mm. that's the equivalent of about six milligrams, but I don't take like grams of aspirin right now. Like that was more mm -hmm. of a Thailand thing. Mm. Uh, I probably take 500 milligrams once or twice a day. Uh, and so, and, and I'm kind of limited by the amount of space I have on my leg. I might use mm. more, but yeah, I just, I just take it early. I'm not as sensitive digestion wise for you. So I think <laughs> I take like 10, 10 to 15 drops of his K with yeah, yeah. I mean, 600 that, milligrams a, of aspirin a day probably like way more than enough. Yeah. So they can be covered, I think. So can you talk about quickly then, what are some other benefits of taking vitamin K then? Cause it's a pretty cool vitamin. The biggest thing that I've noticed is I think it's a powerful relaxant. Like um, I I've told this to so many people, but those, those like uh, live streams with Georgie and Ray would really like, they'd be like peak stress for me, you know? And it, because, so, I mean, I won't go through all the details, but I was like sharing an internet connection with somebody at the same time. And they would like stream Netflix while I was trying to do like a, what I knew would be like a, um, a, a stream with Ray, like add to the historical record of kind of yeah. what Ray Pete says about X, Y, Z. And it would stress me out like crazy. Like, and yeah. the connection would be dropping. I couldn't hear Ray or Georgie. So, it, so again, it would be like peak stress, the most mm -hmm. stressful thing usually I'd do all month. And um, I, I don't know why I'm, I it might have even been for something else. I remember taking larger doses of vitamin K and mm. being like way more relaxed when doing those. And because I'd normally be like so adrenalized by it, like it, it really meant a lot to me because I was like anything that relaxes me in this situation is like highly valuable. And then mm. vitamin K was one of the things that was the most noticeable about that. So, but uh, vit vitamin K is uh, intertwined with energy production clotting obviously and it has the anti-clotting properties too it's like an anti-estrogen it's it does tons of different stuff and so it's really valuable and you mentioned too that uh a lot of people are deficient in vitamin k why is it because they're food choices yeah and i haven't dived into this for a while but i think there is some interaction with pufa like the more pufa you accumulate that can like damage it or interfere with enzymes that metabolize it or something there there was some PUFA component but but I think the deficiency in the diet is probably the most likely like nobody nobody's eating liver like no, yeah. no egg yolks are probably void of any kind of vitamin k it's like the food is just so bad yeah yeah um okay cool and so um the brands of vitamin k that we use so we really like Georgie's which is ideal labs um I just think his, his products are so good that yeah. that one is good. Uh, Super K from Life Extension is probably a good a good yeah. one too, because um, just so there's variety and uh, all the other ones I know of are in MCT oil, and I just have problems recommending that stuff to people anymore. It usually gives them pro stomach problems. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um. Okay. Let's talk about how do you take aspirin. So you talked about it briefly. So you dissolve it in the water. What let the sediment settle a bit, and then add a little bit of um baking soda. Even before that, you'd probably want to find a brand that didn't have any junk in it. So mm -hmm. ideally, just like cornstarch or something. Jerry Care is a very popular brand. So mm -hmm. G E R I C A R E. Um, so if you find find those tablets, and we actually in Mexico we have something very similar. It only mm -hmm. has cellulose and cornstarch. As yeah, because we have in Australia, like I just get the Woolworths home brand ones in the same, just aspirin and that, and I just crush them. Yeah. And then boil the water, put it in, stir it for a bit, and then let it sit for a while. Yeah. A lot of while, but a little while, let it. And the sediment just goes to the bottom. Yeah, and it's yeah, 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 yeah. Same, same here. I do I like I go to the aisle and I just put in all the aspirin in my car. <laughs> um 
but uh so if you have a good brand you can i'll let's tell you how i do it and again i'm not an expert in this like somebody could probably do it better but like i heat up my, the, the water in the microwave for like 30 seconds i take yeah. it out i add in the aspirin i add in the baking soda it starts to fizz up i put it back in the microwave for another 20 30 seconds i take yeah. it out the, the reaction is completely finished wow. and then the, the junk is at the bottom and then i can pour the, the water into another glass and then mix it with juice and take it that way yeah. and would you recommend having it after food yeah for, for yeah. a person especially if they were skeptical or something uh, that that's a good way to do anything that could potentially be irritating uh, is taking it with food. Um, and again, I know you're going to say to me, this depends on the person, obviously. <laughs> but how much, like, do you think as a starting point, you could start with like just a 300 milligram tablet per day? Yeah, I think that's pretty smooth. Like uh, I think the, the inclination for most people is to try 81 milligrams, like the baby aspirin, yeah. but those yep. are like the most adulterated aspirin products I've ever seen. They they have like polyethylene glycol on them. There's like a really harmful additive. And so I'd, unless you could find one with only cornstarch or something, but it's probably mm. not enough to notice anything. So mm. I think there was a paper, I think it was on men that compared a hundred to 300 and the 300 mm. was significantly better for reducing inflammation. Mm. And so, uh, this is really one of those things that if a person wanted to explore it and, and try aspirin, they should try to pay attention to how they felt afterwards. And if they felt like great, like they had more energy, like, um, which is, could be the result of taking aspirin, they mm. felt more relaxed, then they could do it again later and mm. so on and so forth. And they could figure out what the, what dose they needed. But I really don't know of any way to figure it out. Like it, it's probably just in proportion to how inflamed the person is or how bad yeah. their situation is. If they're in yeah. chronic pain or something, they have yeah. cancer or, or uh, arthritis or something like that, like, um, or some autoimmune, like the so-called disease or skin problem, they can probably take a, a significant amount, but they should just be, they should learn about it. You know what I've really noticed too with clients? And again, I just want to pre preface this with they're already doing all the basics, like tracking their food, eating adequate protein, their strength training, they, they're building muscle, you know, prioritizing sleep. Then they've added in um, aspirin, vitamin K, vitamin E, um, and progesterone and cellulite, really help with cellulite. Like obviously it's all those things working together, but seeing some pretty cool transformations to um, actually, and I was talking to, you'd know, Leela. Um, she, you probably, she knows you, she, she's on a crazy journey. She'd be on the podcast. She had like, um, the mold poisoning, but this was before she'd found all of this. And she went on some of those, one of those crazy mold, like, you know, they made her take all this fucking fish oil and shit. So she just Obviously. like, just, it's like, let's just do even more damage. She gained all this weight, got up to like 90 kilos. She's lost like 20 kilos now. Um, and yeah, she doesn't have any cellulite. None. Well, You're just eating like this, taking the aspirin, taking the vitamin K, taking the vitamin E. Um, yeah, it's just pretty cool. I, I can't remember the mechanism, but I, that has something to do with estrogen, like causing water retention in the mm. tissues. I already talked about a hundred times. So I can't remember. Yeah, yeah, it's interesting too. Like I've never, I don't have cellular. I mean, I've got a lot of muscle too, but yeah, it's just it is interesting. Like the women in our program who do it do all the right. Thing. I'm not saying just, you can't just take the fucking supplements and do nothing else. It's not going to work. But doing it in combination with the strength training and eating the right amount, and losing some body fat and blah blah blah. It's yeah, it's amazing the difference it makes. Yeah, yeah. I mean, just having the tools to do something. So so again, like not everything is just safe to supplement with. And so mm. ha having something like an aspirin or a progest -E, or for some people like T3 or thyroid or something like th these are like actually valuable tools that will not like damage a person if used in an intelligent way, in mm -hmm. addition to obviously nutrition. And so uh, vitamin D, vitamin K, like th those are kind of my preference for supplements for myself. And mm -hmm. using too many things tends to kind of destabilize me or cause me to lose my center. And so I don't like to take every supplement on the planet and try to relegate as much of that to food as possible, because mm -hmm. it's just, it's like, if you have a bad day and you're taking like eight, eight things, like how are you going to know what's caught, what caused it or what is contributing to it? It's just too, too difficult to troubleshoot at that point. Mm, that makes sense. And do you think, do you want to add anything? Have I missed out anything? Um, just the bioenergy basics probably covers maybe more. I can't even remember, but the, 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 how to take it uh, free of additives, um, yep. taking it with food, taking vitamin K with it. Those are the most important things I think. Mm. And again, yeah, you don't have to go and buy some expensive brand, find one that just has, like, say, the starch and the aspirin and then dissolve it. It's it's easy. I'm going to do your bicarb soda trick, though, because usually I just crush it with a spoon and then mix it in hot water. So <laughs> that sounds easier and put it in the microwave. That's a good little trick, Daddy. 
yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> just imagine it visualize you crushing the town. Yeah, yeah. Like I used to do in the drug days when I was go out taking yeah. and, you know, get the credit card out. <laughs> Not doing that anymore. Come um, a long also, way, <laughs> I have come a long way. I just can't do it anymore. I'm too old. I'm too old. Well, that was so awesome, Danny. Thanks so much um for coming on and as always, everyone, take a screenshot and share your biggest takeaways on Instagram stories and tag me at K-I-T-T-Y-B-L-O-M-F-I-E-L-D. And each month I pick a winner and they get a tub of Saturay Premium Collagen valued at $79. And uh, I'll be back again next week. Bye.